Hello, Internet. Someone emailed me to ask to make an RPG Maker plugin to do audio convolvers, which sound super fancy, uh, and they are pretty cool. <laughs> In order to, you know, rather than describe them with my mouth, let's hear what it sounds like. Sorry, that's open on the monitor. This is a demo game project. I haven't worked on it forever. Don't worry too much about it. Uh, but the point is, <laughs> the plugin. So you may notice some music, and when we go outside, music changes. We go back inside. It's got this like muffled, muted quality. Go outside. Sounds like we're outside again. So let me mute and <laughs> the music so you can hear me talk. So you might imagine that that is like two tracks that are being lined up or something so that when you go outside, it plays a different track and whatever. That is not what's happening. Um, instead, I've made a plugin to use. And it's a built-in feature for browsers, which uh, you know RPG Maker developers probably know, but RPG Maker games run on a little isolated browser. So it's a feature of the browser built in that lets you do this audio convolution thing. And all audio convolution is, well, I say all it is, it is pretty cool, is you can record what's called an impulse response in some space, like an echoey cave or, or whatever. Um, and then once you have that, you can combine that with any other sound or track of any length that you have, and it will make that other sound or music sound as if it's taking place in the location you took the impulse response, right? So you go to a cave, you record this impulse response, then you play back some music with that impulse response, and now it sounds like that music is taking place in the cave. And I actually, I have like an echoey cave sample I can show you. So um, what we heard before was applied to a music, background music track, right, for RPG Maker. Uh, the plugin also lets you do normal sound effects. So here's a splish splash sound effect. And uh, if we go into like a little cave, I've told that cave to apply an echo sound effect to any and all sounds that play there. Um, and it just so happens that it has some more splish splash sounds. So you can hear that like, yeah, that splish splash quality. Um, so let me show you what that looks like in the game. I'll just close this. Um, we are, of course, using note tags, everyone's favorite note tags. So with the plugin, you can say, hey, while we're on this map, I want to filter the background music to use the muffle effect. And we'll get more into those later. That is, again, referring to some impulse response that was taken. I don't actually know. I didn't make that one. I don't know, under blankets or something. Something to give sound that sort of muffled quality. Um, and if we look at the, sorry, bottom of well here, we're filtering sound effects to have an echoey quality using the echo impulse response. So when you get this plugin, um, and I'll just show it over here. It's a little easier. There's so many plugins, and they're not alphabetical in RPG Maker, so it's easier to find here. Um, but here's, there's two plugins I've got that I've made. This Audio Filters plugin and the Audio Filters, whew, sorry, can't speak, Audio Filters Map Helper. Um, you will need this one. Uh, this one lets you invoke the effects using the script uh, action, you know, in, in an RPG Maker event. You could go into an event and say, hey, I've got a script, and you could write this. Then talk audio filters dot. Do I either want to set the background music, the background sound effects, music effects, sound effects, and then what audio convolvers? And those will apply until you clear them. So then you would later call clear. Um, so that might be useful for maybe a stats effect. You know, you're, I don't know, you're all drunk. The party's drunk and you're doing some wibbly visual effect. You might also want to make the music sound weird. You could use an audio convolver. And when the status effect starts and ends, you would call these scripts. Um, what I suspect most people want to do is tie it to a map like we saw. You know, I'm in the house, and as long as I'm inside the house, I want to filter the background music. And that's where you would use then the second plugin, if you wanted it, to give you the map note tags. Um, again, I expect that's kind of the common thing that people are going to want to do. But you don't have to use it. You could tie it instead. You set it all up manually with, with the scripts if you want, or use both. You can, you know, do note tags and, you know, mix and match uh, for whatever effects you want. Uh, here, so. Right, sorry, plugins obviously go in your JavaScript plugins folder. The audio convolver sounds, the rather the impulse responses, go in this convolver folder. Um, that's a fun rhyme. And it's either, these are the two that come with the plugin, echo and, and muffle, but you could put in anything you want. You can download more or you can record your own impulse responses. Um, you know, do a little Googling and, and you can find out more about that, but I'll, I'll talk a little about it later too. Um, but anyway, you throw the audio convolvers in, in this folder, and this is the name you refer to. If you want the echo, you know, you've got echo.wav, then it's called echo, uh, muffle.wav, it's called muffle, right? <laughs> Pretty obvious. I probably didn't need to explain. Um, and again, the plugin comes with just these two. We, it comes with the echo and the muffle, and then the two scripts. Uh, if you want more, again, impulse responses, you can find them online, and I'll put links to all this stuff in, in the description. Uh, for, for this uh, page that kind of describes the, the technical stuff and shows you how to do it yourself if you wanted to try and make a plugin like this yourself. Um, 
And then, yeah, or you go to something like Freesound and download these impulse responses. Uh, I guess that's not an or. You can both make the plugin yourself and get the impulse responses. Uh, the impulse responses generally are very short. It's like a short, sharp kind of noise, like a, like a clap or something. Um, and you could record an impulse response with your hands, uh, but humans are squishy meat creatures and we make squishier noises. You want something clean. You want a clean noise, ideally, for a really good impulse response. And there are devices, apparently, super special devices you can buy that are for making impulse responses. Um, I'm sure you could figure out something else if you don't want to buy such a thing and, you know, get creative, find, I don't know, find two spoons and knock them together. I don't know. Um, <laughs> play around. Uh, but so you can record your own, but there's tons online. If you Google impulse response, you get kind of mixy results. There's lots of um, other audio software talking about impulse response that I was finding when I was Googling for impulse response. But if you go to a website like Freesound, look for impulse response, you can even say, hey, I want Creative Commons only, you know, so you, you know you're good to use it within your project. Uh, this is essentially, yeah, they've, they've reserved no rights. So you can do whatever the hell you want with the sound. <laughs> no one can stop you. Um, and you will find tons of results. I will say you probably want an impulse response that's like one second, maybe two, probably not five, unless you're expecting some sort of long echoey quality to the sound. Uh, like, there's a sound in here that's 30 seconds, and I haven't even listened to it. I can't imagine. Yeah, 30 seconds, it's way too long for an impulse response. That's going to apply some long trailing effect to every single sound, and probably every time there's a sound in your game, you don't want it to trail on for like 30 seconds. <laughs> so you probably don't want this long impulse response, but I don't know. Maybe you do for some particular sound. Who knows? Um, but generally, you're going to want these like one second, maybe even zero second, um, quick impulse responses, and they don't sound like much. Right? Like, what does that mean? What is, what is that going to do to the sound? It is hard to intuit by listening to this. Maybe if you do it a lot and record your own, you, you will get used to it. But for me, I listen to that and go, I don't know what that's going to make the sound effect sound like. So, you know, read the description. They tell you where they took the sound. Um, one of these says, like, it was inside of a car. Car interior, right? You tell me if that sounds like a car interior to you. But it apparently was taken inside of a car uh, and drop this into your audio convolver folder if you want with this plugin called car.wav and then you can use it set background music to sound like it's in the car whatever that's the gist of it so yeah that's it uh, the plugin is available on itch.io for five dollars uh, I don't know someone suggested they're like dude that's a really great plugin I would pay for it and I took him at his word so I'm charging five bucks for it uh, but again if you know JavaScript and if you have a little bit of time this was my primary source I'm not hiding anything like this is where I looked I've made RPG Maker plugins before. Um, I'm, I'm a developer. That's why I use a weird IDE for <laughs> making my RPG Maker games. So, I mean, I do have, you know, more programming experience maybe than a lot of people. Uh, but, you know, if you, if you are getting into it, um, this would be an interesting thing to learn. And, and there's guides like this online that will tell you how to use audio convolvers inside a browser. The tricky part more is hooking it up to work within um, RPG Maker. And extra tricky, honestly, is the map notes. And you don't have to use the map notes. It's much easier to code up something that you just call with a script tag. So if you are looking to make it yourself, I would start there. Don't even worry about the map notes. You can figure that out later. Um, just start with a plugin that uh, applies to sound effects, uh, kind of in, in that same way. So anyway, that is it. Thank you very much. Um, I hope you have fun with it. I mean, it is, it is fun to, to make these effects, and it is cool when you first hear it. Sound makes such a big difference in games, and I always forget about that fact. Um, having music and sound effects really adds to the, to the experience, and this is just another way to make your game you know, stand out a little more. Uh, not a lot of people appear to be doing this, uh, especially based on the email that I got. So anyway, that's it. Thank you very much, and goodbye.